but today we shall pray. Amen. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 to 14. I'm going to be sharing a few weeks on what I've been titled Reviving the Upper Room for the next few weeks. Reviving the Upper Room. And I'm going to go to Acts chapter 1, 8 and verse 1. Okay? So, sorry, Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 to 14. It says, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Now when he had spoken these things, while they watched, he was taken up a cloud, uh, was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they stood, looked steadfastly towards heaven, he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? The same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. I want you to pay attention to that. The Jesus that you saw or you see is the Jesus that you see in your life. The way you see him is the way he'll appear to you. Okay? It says, then they returned to Galilee from the Mount of Olives or Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. And when they entered, they went up into the upper room where they were staying. Peter, James, John, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot, and Judas the son of James. Verse 14. These all continued with one accord in what? In prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Let us pray. Father, we want to thank you, glorify, and honor you. Um, as we exhort and share today, we ask, give us the grace to pray. Give us the grace to seek your face. Give us the grace to go and pursue you more than ever. We pray all these things in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Most High. Before we go, can I please acknowledge one of our very own who's back visiting us from the central province. Pastor and Mrs. Chisala in the house today with us. Yeah, with Twami. Come on, let's celebrate them. Amen. So good. Pastor C has been with us this week. Very good to catch up and see you all. You keep playing. You are not preaching today. Right? But go on the strings. Right? Acts chapter 1. Reviving the upper room. I'm, I'm gonna, this was going to be one sermon and I want to take my time with it and go into uh, a few weeks of it that it will be good to shift and to change our life. I want you to know that whenever there is a, a, a change of power uh, or a change of order or change of direction, right? And whatever about um, in this current regime, whether there is a change of president or whether it remains, things will not remain the same. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. So no matter which way, it will not remain the same. Uh, because ideally there will still be changes either way to be made. In whichever way it flows. Whether it's an incumbent or whether it's an incumbent. Uh, there will still be shuffles and challenges and things that are moving. And I want you to know that even in the same time, there are contentions in the realm of the spirit where power must be contended for. And there are exchanges even in the realm of the spirit for power. The same way that you have contentions. Um, when I say contentions here, I'm talking about in the form of an election where people come up and decide where, who you're going to select. I want you to know that even in the realm of the spirit, this is a very spiritual time where we must begin to exercise power. Okay? We must begin to exercise power. It's not my job to tell you where to go or pick in what direction. My job is to simply teach you the word of God. The Bible simply says, blessed are the peacemakers, for theirs is the kingdom of God. I want you to know that irrespective of whatever your decision was, right, and whatever the decision will be, we are still a body of Christ. All right? And unity is an essential element for power to be manifested. So today we want to talk about reviving the upper room. Uh, the upper room is a very critical part of the New Testament church. And I want to explain where I'm going with this. 
because the first thing we see in Acts chapter 1 is Jesus is appearing to the disciples as the resurrected Jesus. Jesus appears as the resurrection. Now you and I will be like the resurrection. Jesus is the resurrection. Thank God for that. But we need to know that Jesus was not the first person to resurrect. He wasn't. In fact, Jesus resurrected two people himself that we know of. Jesus resurrected the little girl and Jesus resurrected Lazarus. So what was different about this resurrection? If resurrection was a sign that Jesus was Lord, yes, yes, he came back from the dead. Very true. But if resurrection was enough, then Lazarus would have been God. And the little girl who was resurrected would have been God. So, so what is it about resurrection that we need to understand? It's that this time there was a specific power that was released with the resurrection. That's why the Bible tells us that the same, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, right, is at work in you. Or the same power that resurrected Christ from the dead is at work in you. Uh, and so there's something else that's important here is that we need to know that as a church, we don't just need proof of salvation, but we also need the power of salvation. You see, when Jesus came back, he proved that he came back, yes, but it was insufficient for them to begin their ministry. Now they needed a specific power. And my question is this time, why did they need power? Because prior to that, they were operating in borrowed power. Jesus said, all authority has been given to me, right? And he says, I'm going to send you out and you shall receive power over scorpions, over serpents and all manner of things. But you see, that was not the resurrected Jesus. He simply conferred momentary power to them. That did not mean that they began to walk in authority from that day forward. And you see, that's the challenge with many of us. That we encounter a miracle. We encounter something and we receive momentary power. Because we have not gone through the upper room. The only way to receive this power is through the upper room. We don't just need the, the, the proof, but also the power. You see, well, when you carry or when you're walking in the proof, all you are saying is, let me tell you about Jesus. But when you're walking in the power, you say, let me show you Jesus. When, when, when you're walking in the proof, you are saying, let me take you to church. But when you're walking in the power, you say, let me show you Christ. You see, he says, you shall be my witnesses. In other words, you will produce evidence. God's desire is not for you to prove that he exists with your mouth, but to display the evidence that he is Lord through what you are able to do. We are supposed to be carriers of proof. Somebody say proof. A witness displays proof. But ask anybody who has walked into the courts of law. Just because you are at the scene of the crime, it does not mean that you are a witness. Only one that is drawn into the courts of law and is given authority to testify is called a witness. Can I pray for you? In this season, you will receive authority to testify in Jesus' name. You're not sounding blessed. I said in this season, you will receive authority to testify in Jesus' name. You will see the things you have read about. You will experience the God of this Bible. You will experience the power and the resurrection of his glory. If you believe it, say amen. That's why Paul prayed in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 10. He says that I may know him. And what? And the what? That I may know him and the what? The power, not the, the witnessing or the sight of his resurrection. But there is a specific power. That has come with the resurrection. Beloved, if the resurrection was enough, Jesus would have said, there you go, go ahead. But he said, wait here, tarry here in Jerusalem until you are endued with what? 
Can I dare say it? You will not be effect, an effective Christian until you receive power. Until the church begins to, to produce a certain level of power, people will not believe that Jesus is real. Do you know, do you know the Bible says that Jesus rose from the dead and appeared to over 500 people. But in the upper room, how many were there? 120. Meaning 380 didn't necessarily believe. So, so we are not here to do about Jesus. There's a realm where you operate where there'll be no disputes. Do you know, until Jesus displayed power, his disciples didn't believe him. The Bible says it was only at the wedding of Cana after he made wine out of water. The Bible says, and then they believed him. Just because they followed him, it didn't mean that they believed him. That means it's possible for you to follow and not necessarily believe. But I pray for you that a certain level of power that will change your conviction. If you believe it, say amen. Where do you access this? The upper room. The upper room is the place where your faith stops being a dispute. Do I believe? Don't I believe? Do I believe? Don't I believe? Am I prayerful? I'm not prayerful. Am I prayerful? Am I prayerful? Many of us, that's where we are in our faith. Up and down. Was never God's intention. He says, When you receive power, you shall be. Now, how do we begin to walk? And access? I'm going to take my time and break down what I believe is the upper room experience over the next few weeks. But today I want to focus on one element, and that is the necessary revelation for the upper room. You cannot enter the upper room without a revelation of who Jesus is. You see, he first had to reveal himself to them for them to decide to go into the upper room. You will never pursue God until he presents himself to you. Until he shows himself to you that will determine the level to which you pursue him. He appeared to them and told them to tarry. And the Bible then says that he was then taken up and ascended to the heavens. They saw Christ lifted, Christ being exalted, meaning he was being exalted above the realm in which they were in. Is somebody getting this today? It's only when you begin to see Christ above your sickness that you see healing. You're not hearing. It's, it's only when you see Christ above your financial situation that you experience breakthrough. It's only when you see Christ above every imagination and limitation of this earth that you begin to walk in the miraculous. You cannot walk in the miraculous until you have the necessary revelation of who he is. That is what separates people in church. Us being together does not mean we've seen the same thing. And today you must decide that I want to have greater faith. Like this town, greater faith is built on greater revelation. Before God increases your faith, he reveals himself in a new way to you. Greater faith is built on greater revelation. Revelation will lift you to another place. That is why if you do not take time to read the word of God you will never grow not only will you never grow you will never rise Galatians 2.2 2, write this down Galatians 2.2 2. I just want the very first section of Galatians 2.2 2. it says and I went up by revelation somebody hearing me today I went what? How? It means
is the lack of revelation who always keep you down. So, so this thing of reading the Bible, it, it's not an option. So the upper room is not a place that is just premised on saying, Lord, take me up. Lord, take me up. Lord, no, 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 no. You see, the angel says, men of Galilee, as you have seen him go, you will see him come. The God that comes into your life is the God that you have seen in his way. He won't surprise you. He won't surprise you. Say, you don't believe me that I can bless you? Bam! Here's 50 G's. Tell people about me. Ask about me. Put some respect on my name. No. Why? Because without faith, it is impossible. So if you want to blackmail your way into breakthrough, that's okay. That's okay. So there is level of revelation. So God must first, before he takes you up physically, he must take your word content up. He must give you a greater desire and a greater insight onto who he is. He says, I went up by revelation. Matthew chapter 17 and verse 1, where Jesus goes on the Mount of Transfiguration. I want you to see this. It's called the Mount of Transfiguration. Is that he, he is going to show a different side of him. And notice where he takes to reveal a different side of him. The Mount of Transfiguration. Whenever God wanted to reveal who he was, he took people higher. took Abraham on a mountain to show that he's Jehovah Jireh. He took Moses up a mountain to show that he's the sovereign ruler. Jesus continues to copy the pattern. We're talking about this today. How back in the days people, and not back in the days, people still do that. They go to a physical mountain. Because every mountain was a place of revelation. And so he'd take them up. And the Bible says in Matthew chapter 17 and verse 1. Now after six days, right, Jesus took Peter, James, and John, right, his brother, and led them where? Uh -uh, are you here? He led them where? It's on the screen. Where did he lead them? Uh, not up a mountain, up a high mountain. Other mountains. See, the problem with many of you and where we are is we've been on the same mountain for too long. Why, why, why am I not? Why am I not growing? You've been on the same mountain for too long been at the same level for too long. You still know, for God so loved the world. And Jesus wept. To reveal himself, the Bible says, Jesus led them up a high. Not an ordinary mountain. A high mountain. So, there is a requirement for you in the faith to scale mountains. <laughs> Not just you move mountains. No, you will climb mountains. Because that's what we want. As we want the Lord to move the mountain. Not every mountain is your enemy. Some mountains are your announcers. Some mountains Feel something great about you. So don't be too quick to reject every mountain. Some mountains you must climb. I 
Bible says he took them up to a high mountain. Do you know that there are some things God wants to tell you, but he cannot tell you down here. He needs you to climb up. You can't. He wants to reveal mysteries to you. Listen, always know this, that the miracle on the ground is the mystery on the mountain. Every miracle on the ground is a mystery that is revealed on the mountain. And those who walk in the miracles are the ones who receive the mysteries on the mountain. If your life is always at the base of the mountain, you'll be a victim. I want you to see this. I want you to see what happens. That, that what, what happens is that they, they encounter God. They encounter men of God. The God that you see going up is the God that will come to you. The same way. The same way. I'm going to quickly go to verse 12. Verse 12. Acts chapter 1 and verse 12. I want you to see this progression. Because today what I want us to do is I want us to make our prayer up. That's what I want us to do. I want us to pray. The Bible says, then they return. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. 12, you go to 12 and 13. Okay? Put it together. So, they return to Jerusalem from where? Ah? Huh? From where? Okay, so where was he speaking to them? was he speaking to them? From the? From the mountain. So where did Jesus show himself? On the mountain. The Bible says there is return from the mount of even when Jesus was going to die where did he go and cry? Cry on the mountain. Crying everywhere so they can see. Bible says, when they came back, they came and they went from the Mount of Olives, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. Now, when they came back, where did they go? And when they had entered, they went up into the They went from one level Now, biblically speaking, the upper room is like the third level. Houses which had upper rooms were like rooms. They were like attic, attics, like you know what I mean. Right? So it had two, two floors. Okay? It had two floors and a roof. And the reason to go into the upper room is when the season got hot. It went up where it's cooler. That's a principle right there. When life gets hot, go up. It's cool. You can cool things down by going up. I wish no matter how hot it gets, you will suffer if you remain at home. You must learn to go up. You must learn see, this is what I wanted to hear. The Bible says that when they had received a revelation of what Jesus was doing, they didn't go down the ground and just continue about their lives. Just say, he's coming back. He's coming back. Isn't that what most of us do? You prosper. I receive. You will increase. I receive. about to break through. Do you know I'm breaking through? Do you know? And many of us receive a word without praying it into life. Whenever you receive a prophetic word, don't sit there. 
bond weight. Bond weight for it to come to pass. The Bible says in verse 14, it says they continued with one accord. Where? In now, 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 prayer and supplication. Meaning, there's prayer, then there's prayers on prayers. See, supplication is it's not just prayer. It's prayers on prayers. You understand? There's a level of prayer where you're like, oh God, oh. supplication is to add on top, to supplement to a point to say that whatever necessary prayer is required for my life to move forward, we shall do it. Is somebody getting something today? And so, the revelation, whenever you receive a godly revelation, it should lead you to pray. It should lead you where? So the impact that you have not prayed for, you will not see. The impact that you have not sought, you will not see. You will not see. You need to now return to petition God. Revelations should lead to prayer. Because, please write this down carry no weight if you don't know how to wait. Every revelation comes with a weight that forces you to wait. What do I mean by that? If that revelation is not a burden that gives you That you have no choice but to stand or sit still and hear from God is taking you nowhere. Revelation forces you to wait because that waiting gives you. Do you know the word for glory? The word for glory in the Bible is kabod. Right? The, 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 the Greek word is kabod. K-A-B-O-D. Do you know what kabod means? Wait. That if God literally comes into this place, you will feel a... Any God that does not place a weight on you. I know some of you, he takes away my burdens. No, no, no. Jesus said, take my yoke. In other words, there is still a yoke. There is still a yoke. But this one I will give you grace to carry. I, are you listening? This one I will give you grace. In other words, I will carry it with you. That's why it feels light. It's light not because it's light on its own. But because there's another hand. You ever been to the gym when something is heavy and somebody just comes and offers? Beloved, let me tell you something. If God does not help you, if God does not, the disciples knew to us. Do you know that it was in the upper room that he served the last supper? Read your Bible. It was in the upper room. That he served the last supper. So they went back to the place of waiting on him. Because in the last supper, he waited, served. So he knew the only thing they could do is go back to the place of waiting. 